Hi, welcome to Wet Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm here to Wet Pixel, and we'd like to thank Naughty Cam um, for sponsoring this episode. Um, the sponsors are very important; they help us to produce this episode. So, so we'd like to thank them very much. And of course, I'm going to introduce our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hey, Adam. Do you like my T-shirt? You uh, seem to be matching today. How yeah, cool! Yeah, yeah. I put this on this morning, and I was thinking, uh, and, and Adam's going to comment, so I thought I'd get it. <laughs> so you got in first. <laughs> um, so. Obviously, um, when we started off doing WebPixel Live, we started off doing quite a lot of episodes about top tips, and we thought we might revert and revisit some of those themes. And um, today, we're going to talk about our top tips for lighting, so top tips for making sure that you can get the best out of your lights. So with no further nonsense from me, what's your top tip, Alex, for getting your lighting right? Um, well, I've got a few for you, um, and they're all kind of you know ones that, predominantly uh, are based really you can get these sorted out without even going diving they're things you know that yeah. we should all have right on every dive irrespective of, of our technique these are things that don't have to be done under the pressure of being underwater but can make a massive difference to how well you like your pictures yeah. um, and the first of those is to make sure your strobes are working and i know it sounds really really sort of you know straightforward but the number of photographers dives that are impacted by strobes not working. You know, strobes are very high performance pieces of equipment. You know, you think yeah. about the, the battery power that's going through them and they're doing all of that in a sealed box, often in quite warm water. And yeah. that's really tough thing to do. And, you know, and obviously things go wrong. And if any water goes in there, they're likely to go wrong even more. So yeah. making sure that they're working properly for every dive is really critical with strobes. You know, yeah. people jump in without batteries, they jump in without connectors connected properly or they jump in with old batteries or ropey connectors and all those things can impact your photography. I know with my own photography, I, you know, I consider myself quite a good underwater photographer. The moment my equipment is not working the way I want it to, I get so distracted by it, I cannot yeah. take good pictures. Yeah. And you know, when the equipment's working, I'm just thinking about my photography. When yeah. it's not working, I'm just thinking about the equipment and I'm not taking great pictures. So. It's absolutely critical. You know, I always drum into people on the workshops. You know, you're never going to get any sympathy from me about equipment not working unless you can show me that test shot. And then I'll yeah. help you, you know, till the end of the day to get it working again. But yeah. you've got to have done that test shot. So, yeah, 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 make sure it's working, first of all. And I think, again, a little bit of maintenance. Remember that the battery compartments on strobes seal with O-rings. Make sure you get the O-ring clean. You know, it's, it's like your camera O-ring. You don't want water inside there. And the other thing, and this is slightly contentious, is I... Basically, if I get the chance to change batteries on my strobe, I'll change them. Um, and the logic here being that um, I'd much rather be in a situation where I've got more battery power rather than less. You know, if that if that once in a lifetime encounter happens, I don't want at that point to be be running out of battery power. So, so in general, I if I'm on land and I have the opportunity to change my, I've got a fresh set of batteries, I change batteries um, whenever I can. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to make sure that when I'm in the water, I'm not worried about I can't take this picture because I might. My, it's going to chew my batteries and something else is going to come along. You know, that's, that's not um, that's a, something to avoid. Yeah. Cool. So so number uh, one, make sure they work. <laughs> yeah. Next one is be aware that not all strobes are created equal. Mm. And um, I always say to people, you know, look at the photographers whose work that you think is really well lit and ask them about what strobes they recommend. You yeah. know, personally, you know, yes, if you've got a local dealer, speak to them. But remember that dealers are often motivated by things like profit margin, like earning enough money to pay their staff, and not necessarily about, you know, thinking that you might need the absolute ultimate in equipment, especially, you know, depending on what you want to do. So particularly, you know, there are strobes that have different strengths. You know, there's no one perfect strobe, and understanding yep. the right strobe for the type of pictures you want to take, I think, is really valuable. And yep. we've talked, you know, before about, you know, the quality of light from strobes, but it's really worth investigating and trying to understand it's not just about the price that they sell for um, or how much, you know, how fancy they look in the showroom. You know, it's actually about the light they produce underwater. Absolutely. And this is this is something you can't, you, you know, you can look at specifications to the locales come home. You can you can consult and, and, and choose a strobe. But at the end of the day, if the light that's coming out of it isn't making your photographs look beautiful, then it's not doing the job. Um, yeah. So, so and, and, pay and for and specifications. Angle, yeah. Making them yeah. look beautiful is far more important than how powerful it is. Yeah, yeah. So, so and there are accessories that can change those things, but getting on top of all of that is really important. I would also say, particularly for newer photographers, having a match pair of strobes makes your life yeah. so much easier. And I know when you're starting out and all the equipment is very expensive, people are yeah. sort of drawn towards buying, well, I'll buy one good one 
and one cheapy one yep. um, or, or whatever. It is really important area to invest in. And I think trying to shoot with two different power, different performance strobes just gives yourself a lot more hard work. You know, yep. I, I've done it underwater, you know, lots of times either when testing different strobes. And it's yeah, just yeah. annoying because yeah, one just... click of one doesn't equal one click of the other. And there may be yep. places where you can get them the same if you need them to be the same. But when they've got two a match pair of strobes up on one, down on the other, you've still got the same amount of light total. You know, yep. it just makes it easy. It I, makes I've it actually easy? had it with uh, uh, testing strobes where quite literally you can see the color of light from the different strobes you know and it's not if you had two matching ones you wouldn't notice because the color of light would be balanced but literally there's like almost like a line in the middle of the image mm. and, and you've got you know you've got different colors of light and that ultimately there's nothing you can do about that that's you mm. know it, it, it's that's that that funny i mean we were testing them so it's different but you know if you if you're actually trying to create something beautiful it's never going to happen um, yeah yeah for me it's you know more about the power and the coverage the color yes you do notice but the, it's the power and the coverage you'll notice more than that one thing that really brought this home to me is when I started teaching underwater photography a lot, you know, 15 years ago, um, on my Cayman workshops, we always do a pool session. And during that, mm -hmm. I set the photographers a very simple challenge of, of shooting a pair of fins in the pool. And the aim of the exercise is to make sure that they're working properly and they can, they can create exactly the photo I want in a controlled condition and make sure their gear's working, but also to get them to really finesse their light and to get a really good quality of light. Mm -hmm. And I know exactly how to do that shot and i'll go down and do it with their camera if they're struggling and what i see is i see massive differences between the different strobes in that mm. very controlled environment as in there are certain types of strobes that produce beautiful light for wide angle and the strobes that create really good light for wide angle are much easier to shoot with than the strobes that don't because mm. the strobes that don't they're much less forgiving on aim and you mm. really have to get them exactly right on exactly the right aim right power and yeah so yeah, that, that goes back more to the point of not all strobes are created equal, but, you know, yep. it, it does. Yeah. And so if you're mixing and matching these strobes, it really yep. makes a difference, you know, side to side in how yep. you use them. Yep. OK, um, right. I'm going to this one you're going to like. I know you're going to smile when I say this. Um, turn your TTL off. Oh, yay. <laughs> yeah, Nothing um, contentious about that. Yeah. So TTL can be useful underwater. But if you are interested in creating artistically beautiful underwater images, particularly using more advanced creative lighting, TTL is rarely going to be able to figure out what you want to do. Yeah. And it's going to end up ruling your photography rather than you ruling your photography. Yeah. Um, if you just want to take sort of fish or macro ID shots, TTL can generally do that for breakfast. Sure. But if you actually want to get into really interesting lighting, you know, TTL is not going to be your friend. And I think we'll just yeah. leave it at that. It's a big topic, but, you know, it's, yeah. No, I agree. I'm, I'm going to keep, keep uh, uh, thinking of science. I would say, well, no, what I'm going to say is there there are some instances when TTL is a saver, and that's the kind of situations where my f fingers are so cold I can't move them anymore. Then TTL comes into its own. But yeah, and I'm particularly, particularly in that situation, you want to take a very standardly lit photo, you know, then, yeah, sure. yeah, and it's macro shot particularly, then, yep. then great. Um, yeah, yeah. but generally if you want to create artistic, unusually lit, you know, photos with different atmospheres, how yeah. the hell does the cameras, electronics have any idea what you're trying to do? Yeah. It doesn't Other know what's in your mind. 18% uh, yeah. gray. You know, it's, yeah. and the other problem with strobes is underwater photographers work with two strobes. And most of the time in underwater photography, you probably don't want your two strobes on the same power. Yeah. TTL sends the same signal to both strobes. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so they're always going to be giving exactly the same output. Um, yeah. And yeah, so enough said. We could go, we could go on about that, but I'm not going to. Right. Could, um, yeah. The next one is maintain your clamps, not even part of your strobes, but make a really big difference to how well you will use your strobes. Um, I, you know, after trips, we talked about it on the maintenance one. Ziploc bag, spray the clamps with, clamps with WD-40, wind them out, wind them back in, get the WD-40 off of them, leave them in the Ziploc bag for a week or two, let the WD-40 really go in, then wash them off, dry them up, leave them to dry nicely, get this, you know, obviously they've had a good soak before that and dry yeah. before. But and I think that maintenance keeps them working really well. Also yeah. understand that clamps have a limited shelf life in that, you know, clamps that have done hundreds and hundreds of dives don't work anything like as well as new clamps. And that can make a really big difference to how well your whole strobe arm positioning system works. And when yep. it works really well, it's a pleasure to use and it's a pleasure to put your strobes in the right places for photos. When yep. it's not working well, you get lazy, it's a pain to use and your lighting suffers. So your, your strobes and your arm system should be 
in a position where you can use them as you want them to, not that you're resistant to using them. So if you're thinking, well, I really want to move that strobe, but I can't be bothered because it's going to take me five minutes, that's telling you something. You know, that's telling you that you need to need to invest some time and effort in maintaining your clamp system and making it so that when you want to move it, you can move it at will, basically. Um, and, I, you know, I frequently see people that will do a whole dive with their arms and clamps in the same position. They don't move them at all. And whilst there's nothing wrong with that, um, quite a lot of the time it boils down to the fact that they, they've got them in that position they're happy in that position and they know if they're going to move them everything's going to fall apart so um, you really don't want to be there you want to be in a position where you, if you want to move them you can move them and it's simply not an issue um, yeah and uh, that's a combination of maintenance and to some extent um, as, as, as you mentioned Alex you know making sure you've got the right stuff which with clamps often means replacing them fairly regularly too so yeah 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 you know you know several hundred dives not you know 50 dives it's Two, I, I think I wrote in my book about 300 dives is about when I try and replace them. Yeah. Um, I think it keeps, them, it keeps you at your best. Right. Um, the next one is understand and use the right accessories for your lights. Mm. And the, the big culprit here for me, I see on the workshops I run, are dome diffusers. Yeah. Dome diffusers are a great accessory for close focus wide angle. They soften and spread and improve the quality of the light. They're great. Yeah. But if you're shooting long, long distance subject, they are stopping your strobes penetrating the water to light something far away. So if you're going in and you're planning to shoot a big school of fish or a shark that's, you know, swimming, you know, three, four, three feet, a meter away from you, in those situations, the dome diffuser is just stopping your light getting to the subject and is actually spreading it around and potentially creating more backscatter. So, so if you have got stuff in the water, by spreading that light out, you will tend to light that stuff up in the water. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's just yeah. yeah to understand the importance of those accessories. You know, your standard diffusers, shooting with no diffusers, shooting with beam restrictors, shooting with dome diffusers. All of those are designed for specific jobs to do a better job than the strobe on its own. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. they also don't do everything better than the strobe on its own. And, and changing accessories or taking off the accessories when you no longer need them for the shot you're doing is really important. Generally, a lot of photographers find this a real chore to change underwater. So it's something maybe you decide before a dive, okay, the target on this dive is this, therefore this is how I'm going to set my strobe up. Um, yeah. I like changing them underwater, but I've noticed teaching most people don't and would much rather say, right, this is this type of photography dive, change to this type of strobe setup. Yeah, I, I change mine underwater. The only the only one that I don't change, or I very rarely change underwater, is, is if I'm using a warming filter, um, so, sorry, warming diffuser. They mm -hmm. tend to go on and stay on simply because. But then, I mean, that's because I'm shooting wide angle, and you know, and that's what I'm doing. So I'm looking for blues in the water, and, and I'm unlikely to change that. So that would be an example of one that stays on. But certainly, things like dome diffusers and and, and that kind of thing, if I'm using them, they come on and off as as, as they're needed. Yeah, for sure. I think that that one of the one of the advantages of some of the newer strobes now is the bayonet type systems that allow for attachment make adding and removing them much easier and the final thing i wanted to say was to remember to keep checking your strobes during the dive it's quite easy when you're swimming through the water or your strobe gets knocked by a leg or, or something underwater mm. for strobes to end up out of position and one of the things i see a lot in newer photographers is they go down they know where their strobe should be and halfway through the dive one is pointing out like this and one is pointing out like that. And they're not yeah. intending them to be pointing in those directions. Yeah. And one of the things I think experienced photographers do is they hold their camera out at arm's length every now and again through the dive. And they're constantly paying attention to where their strobes are. Um, yeah. You know, you're, I think experienced photographers are actually reaching out and just making very small adjustments all the time. And as yeah. a result, they're always on top of where their strobes are. But yeah. even if you're not making changes all the time, do keep checking that your strobes are pointing where you want them to be pointing. And that's often easier if you hold it out and you have a look back at it, um, particularly if the camera's neutral, you can even let go of it. And, and, and just have a look from an arm's length away gives you a much better perspective that the strobes are in the right places. And a sort of bonus tip, which which I use quite a lot as well, is is I'll actually, um, assuming I've got a fairly stationary subject, is I'll actually trigger the, sh the, sh the, the strobes looking over the top of the camera so I can actually see where the light's falling. And again, obviously, if I have got a strobe that's now got in a funny angle or whatever, it's very obvious then because I look at where the light's falling. And it's it's f flashing back in my eyes. What? So same sort of idea. You know, um, you know, if you have the opportunity, the subject allows it. Um, you know, you can actually, you don't have to be looking to the viewfinder when you're, when you're taking pictures. You can also just look over the top and just make sure that the light is, is going where you, where, you, where you want it to be going. Yeah, sure. And I think once you become an experienced underwater photographer, 
you know the moment something's up. You know, you take a picture, it's like, this should be working. Why isn't it working? You yeah. know, you see it on the LCD screen. That side's too bright. Why is it? I, it should be set here. Oh, I've yeah. knocked the switch. Um, yeah, or yeah. there's not enough light there. What's wrong? Oh, I bumped the strobe. So I think yeah. when you're an experienced photographer, you do actually get that also from Picture's your LCD up. screen. But yeah. inexperienced photographers just seem to blame themselves and go, oh, I'm not very good at this underwater photography thing. I'll take some more pictures and hope I get better. Whereas, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think that's, that's very, very good. Um, Alex, um, obviously, we mentioned looking at um, photographers' images to see their lighting effects. Um, where can people see more of your images? Um, Instagram's a good place. Um, I like coming on Wet Pixel Live. It's a reminder to post stuff. With with the UPY judging that's been running recently, I've not posted anything for ages because I've been totally overrun with work. But yeah, Instagram Alex Mustard One, I think. Is that right? Yeah, Alex Mustard yes. One on Instagram. Great, that's fantastic. Thank you for that, Alex. Thank you very much. Um, and. While on the subject of thanks, we'd like to thank Nauticam again for sponsoring this episode. Um, we can't make these without their support, so thank you very much. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Um, please feel free to add any comments about your tips for lighting or um, any suggestions, and drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.